Welcome to worship. We have a new recording method now, um, so we would welcome your feedback, and you can just email or call the office. We do hope and pray that uh, you're able to enjoy and find meaning in this worship service. Let us confess. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, and Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us, for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us, for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are all already and always forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us hear God's word. A reading from Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome, be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. And a reading from Matthew 16, we're picking up after last week's lesson, where Jesus applauds, if you will, Peter, for uh, Peter identifying him as the Messiah. Jesus says, Peter, you're the rock upon which I will build my church. And then this follows. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will, it give, will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. We are all like Peter. We all live in that intersection between honest and true confession. You are the Messiah, Son of the living God, and misunderstanding. No, Lord, this must not happen to you. No, Lord, I know better than you do. Listen to me, Lord, for I know the ways of this world. And what the world understands is strength and power and might and a closed fist lowered upon the table, struck across the face, a fist of anger, a fist of refusal, a fist of rejection, 
Satan's fist, sometimes our hands. So Jesus says to Peter, says to all of us, get behind me. You must listen to my ways and my voice. There is but one way with God and it is not the way of the fist, but rather of the open palm. The hand that opens to all in, in invitation and giving. The hands of Christ spread open on the cross. The difficulty is that we struggle to understand what this cross means to us. Jesus doesn't say, go seek out your cross. He says, pick up your cross. There are crosses in all our lives, not burdens, but crosses. Yet we struggle. How must I pick up my cross? What does this mean? What does a cross mean in my busy, complicated life? I was thinking long and hard about this, for I believe it is a critical issue in our lives, maybe the critical issue. We sometimes throw up our hands and say, what can I do, Lord? I was thinking, and bear with me here, I was thinking about athletes and cooks and artists and singers and mathematicians and much more. I was watching some of the World Track and Field Championships last weekend and was amazed at what these athletes can do, those men and women. They are a fraction of the human population that is too small to measure in their ability. None of us can run or jump like they can. Look at the professional athletes in almost any area of a competition. Competition. Look at Simone Biles. Is there anyone who can measure up to her? I was thinking about those people who are world renowned chefs and bakers. There is no way I or many of us could ever make the meals that they can make or bake the desserts that they can bake. Not many of us. Or think about singers and other musicians. I mentioned last week that we saw Bruce Springsteen and the quality of musicianship is just astounding. Few people can do such things. Few people can play the piano like Jenny can. We saw the movie Oppenheimer and of course it is filled with depictions of the most brilliant minds of the time, Einstein included. There were very, very few people, if any, that brilliant. I could go on and on with examples of so many areas of life. Maybe there are even those you know in your life who have relationships with their families or friends or loved ones that you think no one, no one can match. But does that mean that even though I cannot run with those track champions, I should not run? Just because I cannot bike in the Tour de France, should I not buckle up my helmet and strap on my shoes and enjoy the wind in my face and friends at my side? Just because I cannot cook like a gourmet, does that mean I should not prepare a dinner for loved ones, for family, for friends, or maybe for Walter's nursing home? Just because I cannot play like Bruce or Jenny or sing like an opera star, does that mean that I should not lift my voice in praise and joy? Just because I am no rocket scientist, does that mean I should not strive to better understand our world? Just because I'm not perfect in love, does that not mean I should not struggle to love as God calls us to love? There are those in our world, the Mother Teresa's, if you will, or Dorothy Day of the Catholic Worker Movement, or many others I can list, who pick up crosses that seem so much larger than I could ever carry, who sacrifice their whole lives. But does that mean I should not pick up the crosses that are before me, the crosses that are present in each of our lives? Does that mean that I should not search out ways in my life that I cannot simply put the other before the self? For that is what picking up the cross means. St. Augustine often spoke of sin as a form of being curved inward on oneself, to look inward. We think inward, we turn inward. It's about the self, about the me, myself, and I. Curved inward like fingers of a clenched fist. A clenched fist can do nothing other than strike. A clenched fist only tightens in anger. Can we open ourselves like a loving open hand, like God's hands on the cross that refuse to strike back, that chose the way of sacrifice over the way of power or violence or revenge or might? Maybe you are not Mother Teresa and we certainly aren't Jesus. Maybe you look around and think, you think that you just don't measure up to those others who seem to sacrifice so much 
Don't compare yourself to others. Simply look at your own hands and open them in love and service to all that God puts before you. That's what Paul was trying to encourage the people in the church of Rome and others to do in those words we just heard. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. It's not rocket science. Jesus told his disciples, if anyone want to be my believers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. We just finished a delightful series titled After Life. Now, if anyone wants to watch it, please know that there are, there are no flesh scenes in it. But I need to warn you, some of their talk about sex is not for the faint of heart. Just a warning. But it is about a man named Tony in a small English town. He works in a very quirky small local newspaper filled with very quirky people. The town is just as humorous and strange at times, and he is a recent widower. His wife died of cancer. They had no children, but they adored one another. There are many home movies of her that he has on his computer, and they would see her. The basic premise is that Tony simply cannot deal with his grief. He cannot move on in life. He drinks way too much. He is angry and mean to people, even as he is also very funny. I'm not giving away too much if you choose to watch it. Now what happens near the end is that an assignment for his paper takes him to a hospital where he meets a little girl who has shaved her head in support of her sister who lost her hair due to chemotherapy. He also meets a little boy going through the same treatment. Now, Tony is not a believer in God, and the boy is. He says that to Tony that he will either go, uh, he will either get better or go to heaven. The boy asked Tony if he would come back to see him because he's funny. He says, you're funny. Will you come back and see me? Will you come back tomorrow? And Tony is caught off guard. He says, oh, okay. And the boy says, will you come back every day? And Tony realizes that he must open up that he must give of himself to others, that if he is going to live, if he's going to have an afterlife in this life, he must pick up his grief and move on. And the way to do that is to live not for himself or focus only on himself or his own grief, but he must live for others. He must open his hand from a fist, from anger, from grief, to giving that he can find life. He can find eternal life in this life. St. Francis of Assisi said it wonderfully in his very famous prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life, now and forever. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God of life, your words are the joy of the heart of your church. 
draw the secret to you, place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses, and open your children to your truth when we stumble. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of steadfast love, work in your people to renew the church, that lands and oceans are restored to the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peacefully as part of your world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of patience, lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering, lonely, and in pain. Liberate your people being insulted, persecuted, or in the grasp of ruthless uh, rulers. Give endurance to workers who persevere on this labor day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments for all. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of justice, equip this congregation to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you in splendor, especially Dot and Shirley. Nurture us in faith until the day we join their heavenly song. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these in the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and always. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.